Jonas Vingegaard was the prohibitive favourite for this time trial, but would his Danish compatriots have other ideas to upset him? Christoph Laporte was in the cursed leader's jersey going into the race as the last. We'll see him in that after this time trial, which is more time trial kilometres than the entire Tour de France. has 31 k's long, finishing in Belmont de la Loire, and it's a hilly TT without any steep gradients, with downhill sections, a flat section, and then a false flat drag for the last 10 k's or so. A really difficult TT to get the pacing plan right, and Remy Cavagna, also one of the big favourites of the stage with the snood on, was really, really hot to T1 and T2, but he got that pacing, I think, a little bit wrong, went out too fast, and this false flat drag killed his legs in the end. Of course, he went into the hot seat, beating Oliveira and Castro's times, but would that be enough to win? David Gaudu had an absolute shocker. He got caught by Hindley. Lander, too, no good. Mars lost two minutes. So Carapaz, all these guys shipped big, big time before the weekend mountain stages. Two minutes is a... It's a lot of time, and other guys did a lot better. Mikael Björg, though, he did an unbelievable T1, but then he only got faster from there, just a little bit behind Cavagna, and then he gradually took more and more time on this false flat uphill drag. The three-time U23 world champion, but he's never won a race in the professionals Cavani was getting a little bit hot in that hot seat with Björg with 150 metres to go, only 30 seconds behind him, easily beating Cavani's time. And would that be good enough to win the stage? I mean, Vingegaard is not the best TT profile for him. His teammate Yates was flying to T1-2, although he's fiddling with the computer. Then he lost his, his aero bid on with about 25k left. And it's hot conditions too. I don't know if guys were drinking. At T2, he was only 10 seconds behind, but he really slowed up in the finish, kind of the opposite pacing to his teammate Björg, and just didn't have enough for that false flight uphill drag, losing a minute or so to his teammate, and maybe 40 seconds to Jonas Vingegaard in the end. Hinley, other guys, but yeah, did a good TT, still a good TT. He and Hinley and O'Connor, they did, you know, professional, really solid time trials, not losing too much, losing under a minute or so. And yeah, one of Hinley's best ever time trials. So he's certainly improving or been working at that discipline. Not that it's, you know, the TT in the Tour is much harder than this, but yeah, he passed David Guru, for example. They're both diminutive climbers, but look at the difference. Same with Martinez. At T1, he was virtually level, or just, I think, yeah, about level with Cavagna, then gradually lost time, and he also was a bit slower or not blew up, but just, yeah, he obviously went very hard at the start and then lost time at the end, but still a fine enough time trial. Same with O'Connor, best time trial of his career by far. Now, I don't know if the rule changes, which benefit the guys between 180 and 190 centimetres helped him because they were kind of disadvantaged by the previous rules before this year, but to be basically the second GC guy behind Vingegaard, only less than 30 seconds behind him, unbelievable TT. Haig off the Giro, did a pretty good TT as well. He's obviously fighting with the Bahrain setup, which is tough. But yeah, under a minute behind Cavagna. Jorgensen crashed twice yesterday, so perhaps a little bit less, maybe 30 seconds or so, than he would have hoped for. But he was Vingegaard. The only man, because Laporte is too long for him, the only man that could beat Mikael Björg is compatriot from Denmark, and he was up on Cavagna and Björg at T1, which had the first 2Ks, 4% uphill section. But then he went, he was the 12th quickest from T1, to T2, this point here. So he lost time to Cavagna when, not slow, but he, he was 2 kph slower than Björg and Cavagna on the flat section, and then not much quicker than Björg, in fact, slower than Björg, on the false flat uphill with the foreshortening and 200 metres to go, he still was about 20 seconds behind Björg. So still, even though he didn't win the stage, Vingegaard put big time into riders like Mars Gaudu. He put a decent amount of time into Hindley, Haig, Jorgensen, Adam Yates, and only about 25, 29 seconds into O'Connor, who podiumed this race behind Rog and Vingegaard last year. But yeah, it looked like Vingegaard left it all on the line. Unsurprisingly, he almost stopped pedaling just by the line. So see, he said maybe he went a little bit too hot at the start in his post-race interview, um, and then he didn't have enough for the, the false slide uphill drag. But yeah, it's a different TT in the Tour, steeper climbs which suit him more. Uh, and the only man that really could, in theory, beat Björg, although they see his time here, was Christophe Laporte in the yellow jersey. And so Björg, emotional, wins his first 
ever race and a world tour race a tt at the dauphine no less masterful pacing from him in uae they had an absolutely outstanding day is that an ai image or just a, a grainy photo beating vingegaard by 12 seconds cavagna in third blew up a little bit on the false flight 27 seconds and fred wright ben o'connor gross schartner herogots yates Oliveira, castro so three uae there in the top 10 Björk also goes into the leader's jersey. I wonder if he'll be able to keep that tomorrow in the medium mountain stage by 12 seconds ahead of Vingegaard. Here's what he had to say after the stage. Yeah, you know, I've worked so hard for this uh, first pro victory and um, yeah, I'm just so relieved that I finally got it now. Yeah, a lot of uh, emotion because because you, you struggled or you thought it wasn't going to come and it has finally come. Yeah, you know, I felt like I had so many chances to to do it and i just uh, didn't live up to my own expectation and uh, yeah you know even this morning i doubted myself on the i said the course was too hard and uh, yeah my manager texted me that uh, yeah just go for it today i have nothing to lose the first climb i wanted to uh, go hard but not above my limit because uh, there were some really hard climbs coming later in the in the race and uh, yeah i just stayed within my limits and uh, did the descent as good as i could it didn't took take too much risk and uh, yeah and then the last like 10 k's uh, David the aerod aerodynamicist of the team he was in the car and really pushing me yeah and then the last like five kilometers I think I was like on time with Cavagna and then uh, yeah then I could just power it home I just uh, thought about my wife and uh, yeah and then I just sprinted to the finish line I hope you enjoyed the video Egan Bernal is also back racing he actually beat carapaz and i think marcinko in the tt which is in his forte anyway and he's just coming back from injury so i've got big hopes for bernal at least he's definitely capable of winning a stage from a breakaway in the tour de france i hope he goes but it's just good to see him back on the bike too until tomorrow's video ciao